a happy Sabbath to you, my friends. It is such a pleasure to be back again to share the word of God together. I believe God has been good to you. The very fact that you are watching me again suggests that God has been gracious to you. You have made it from one Sabbath into another Sabbath. A day of rest. A day of gladness. A day where we spent family time together worshipping Christ. Today, my friends, I feel like preaching today. I want to share with us a story in the Bible, a, mirac a miraculous story in the Bible. Now, I want to share on a miracle because I want us to know that even in this day, God can perform miracles. It is good to see what Jesus did before. Now understand that what God did before, he can do today. What he has done for others, he can do for you and for me. So I am going to share one of my favorite stories, one of my favorite um, miracles that Jesus performed. And it is found in the book of Mark chapter 10. Today I'm going to read Mark chapter 10 from verse 46. So I read Mark chapter 10 from verse 46 all the way to 52. And it reads this. Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Now, my friends, I, I want to share this story with us so we may learn lessons about what Jesus can actually do in this life. So the story broken down. Here's what we have with Jesus came to Jericho. The Bible tells us that he came with his disciples. Now we know Jesus had 12 disciples and he also had a huge crowd following him. Wherever Jesus went, you see, he had so many people, multitudes, people left their homes, just wanted to follow Jesus. There was something about Jesus that made him attract so many people. Now the lesson that I want to take from that is, I don't know about you, I don't know about myself, does my character attract people or repel people? Oh, that's a question for us to reflect on. I'm not going to stop there too much. But you see, as people living in this world today, imagine what it would be like if we had a character that attracts people, a character that makes people want to come together, a character that just makes people to be of one mind. Now, anyway, the Bible says that Jesus is walking and this great multitude is following him. But now there is something that happens as he is walking. We hear that there is a blind man. This blind man is called Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. The Bible says he was there sitting on the road begging. This is the context of the man. There is a blind man who happens to be sitting on the road. We know we have all encountered uh, blind people, or maybe not even blind people, but less fortunate people sitting on the road begging. 
Every single day, this was his life. But on this particular day, Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was passing by. He heard that Jesus had come into town. The Bible tells me that when he heard that Jesus was coming, he, when he heard that it was Jesus, not any other Jesus, but the particular Jesus, that is Jesus of Nazareth. Now, let me stop there for a minute. I want to emphasize that Jesus is Jesus of Nazareth. If you have heard of a Jesus and he is from is not from Nazareth, he is not the one I'm talking about. The one we pray to today, the Jesus we follow today, he is the one who came from Nazareth. This same Jesus was walking in Jericho when Bartimaeus heard that Jesus is passing by. The Bible tells me that when he heard this, he began to cry out. He is crying out and he says, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. I don't know if you can relate to Bartimaeus in this situation. You know, sometimes there are situations in our lives that there is nobody else we can cry to but a super being. There are situations that you experience on a day-to-day -day basis that you cannot cry out to anybody else but to Jesus. Maybe, my friend, you have never really tested what it is like to cry out to Jesus, but I want to tell you that there are issues of life that no other man can help with except Jesus of Nazareth. You know yourself what your circumstances are. You may not be blind, but you know exactly what, is, what it is that is keeping you in the situation of misfortune. You know what it is that's keeping you in a place you really, really don't want to be in and you don't know where to go. Today, I want to invite you to that same Jesus of Nazareth who happened to be walking in Jericho when Bartimaeus heard Jesus is passing by. So what happened? The Bible tells me that, you see, as Jesus was walking about with this great multitude of people, now you and I know this. If there happens to be a group of people, it's a bit difficult to maintain order. It is a bit difficult to hear what is going on, especially if everybody is walking. Now, if you are walking with a group of people, I would imagine everybody is, you know, pushing and shoving. Everybody is trying to talk. Everybody is trying to, to have a peek at Jesus in this moment. And so Bartimaeus realized that this is my opportunity. And the Bible says that he cried out. Uh, well, I'd like to think that, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a small cry. It was a loud cry. Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. The Bible tells me that the crowd that was about, in fact, it reads like this in, in verses 48. Then many want him to be quiet. Now, do you know that in this life, there are people that, you know, they see you in your situation. They understand the predicament you are in, but somehow they do not want you to talk about it. Somehow they don't want you to be crying out about it. Have you heard people that say to you, you know what, just don't talk about that stuff when you know for sure you just need to let this stuff out. I want to tell you, my friends, that in this world we are living in, we have so many people who are so self-centered, so selfish, that they don't care about your situation. All they care about is as long as they themselves see what is happening in life. As long as it's going so well for them, they don't care about your challenges. Now they, they say to Bartimaeus, keep it quiet. Keep it on a down low. Why? Because as far as they are concerned, your issues are not that important. I want to put it to you, my friends, that you see, in this life, you have your issues. Understand your problem. Understand that no man should ever stop you talking about your problem. Even if you want to cry out about your problem, please do so. Because you see, when you cry out, something does happen. Now, somehow, Bartimaeus, he had to drown the voices of the many people by shouting to Jesus. Somehow, his voice had to be projected so loud that it has to go above the crowd. 
I want to put it to you, my friend. Even when people tell you to stop, just cry aloud. The Bible says, Bartimaeus cried out all the more. He could not be stopped. Now let me tell you, my friends, let no man take your joy from you. Let no man stop you from crying out to God. Let nobody turn you around when you are committed to reaching your goal. Don't let people, you see, there are people in life, you try and share with them your challenge or you try and share with them your dreams and all they do is pour water on it. All they do is just to tell you to be quiet. All they tell you is the negativity of how difficult it is to achieve. But I want to tell you, my friends, cry out all the more. Because when you cry out all the more, understand when Bartimaeus did this, Jesus heard him. Do you know that when this Jesus I'm talking about, you see, when you cry out in the midst of a crowd, he hears your voice distinctly. The Jesus I am talking about, he is so tuned to the cries of people who are seeking him desperately. The Jesus I am talking about, he is able to hear his ears. His ears are not blocked that he cannot hear. This Jesus I am talking about, it doesn't matter how overwhelming life is. It doesn't matter how overcrowded your life is. When you cry out in the midst of the crowd, he hears distinctly. So Jesus heard the voice of Bartimaeus. The Bible says that he stood still because he heard somebody crying out his name and Jesus commanded that this man be brought to him. Oh, now this is the moment. This is the, the moment for Bartimaeus. Now you see you can have a wonderful special moment with Jesus. Just understand your need. When you know your need, that your need is great. When you understand that no man should get in your way of expressing your need, my friends, when you get to Jesus, it is a joyful occasion. It is a joyful moment. Do you know why it is so a joyful moment? Now understand, Bartimaeus was no stranger to begging. Bartimaeus lived a life of begging, but whenever he begged, people gave him things that never redeemed him out of his situation. Of course, maybe they gave him some money and he could buy some food. Of course, maybe they gave him a piece of cloth. But you see, they left him in the same place. Now there are people in this life all they do is just to meet your temporary needs. All they do is just to give you enough to keep you going, but they can never change your life until you meet Jesus. Now I feel like preaching, my friends. I am telling you, you see, this Jesus that I'm talking about, he is in the life-changing game. Jesus doesn't just meet your temporary need, but Jesus looks at your situation and he turns it around. So what does Jesus do? Jesus has an encounter with Bartimaeus. The Bible tells me when Bartimaeus heard that Jesus called him, he threw away his garments and he ran to Jesus. Blind as he was, he came and threw maybe himself at Jesus. And, and, and here's this encounter. Jesus says to him, young man, what?" Do you want me to do for you? Now, do you know that even today Jesus is, is asking this question to all of us? What do you want me to do for you? My friends, I want to put it to you. Some of us, we need to be able to recognize that we want Jesus to take us out of some of the difficult situations that we are in. Some of us, we have friendships that are toxic. Some of us, we are in relationships that we don't need to be in. Some of us are going through some family issues that we just do not know how to resolve. Some of us are in some financial distresses. Some of us are on the brink of mental breakdown and we just do not know who is able to help in this moment. Understand that when you meet Jesus, he will ask you, what do you want me to do for you? Now, this question to me implies one ought to know what their need is. And my friend, allow me to ask you the question, do you know? what your need is in this life. As you walk up and down, as you do your day-to-day -day hustles, do you really know what your need is? Bartimaeus was crying out to Jesus, won't it be a tragedy to come to Jesus 
and he does not know what his need is. It won't it be a tragedy for him to come and beg Jesus for some coins just to buy bread in that moment or for a piece of cloth. But he comes to Jesus recognizing that now he is standing in front of the one who is able to change life. I thank God for Bartimaeus because when Bartimaeus came, he knew that people were helpful, but people only met his temporary needs. But when he met Jesus, he realized that this is a game changer. So he says to Jesus, he turns to Jesus, he says, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. The cry of a blind man. In other words, Jesus, I have been in this situation so long. I have never known what it is like to be independent. I have been in this situation sitting, uh, asking people for alms, asking people to help with the little bit they have, but I am sick and tired of being sick and tired of my blindness. Now, Jesus, please help me with my sight. My friends, understand your need. Understand your situation. I want to say to you, my friends, you see, Jesus is more than willing to listen to you. He is more than willing to intervene only if you allow him. Now, Jesus will not force himself on Bartimaeus to give him sight. He says, Bartimaeus, what would you have me do for you? What is it that you want me to do? And today, my friends, if only you listened, if only you looked at nature, it tells you and you will hear God's voice loud and clear saying, what would you have me do for you? Now, you know your need. I can't be here prescribing people's needs, but you know exactly when you go in your bed at night, the thing that's causing you to lose sleep. You know for sure when you're on your own why you can't tolerate your own thoughts. You know for sure the thing that's eating you alive. Jesus is saying, what do you want me to do for you? Oh, Rab oh Bartimaeus said, Jesus, Rabboni, or in other words, teacher, the great one, that I may receive my sight. Now, Jesus, you see, Jesus has no problem meeting needs, especially when we come, when we bring our burdens to him. The Bible says, cast your burdens unto him, cast your cares unto Jesus, for he cares. And truly, I can tell you, when you give your life to Jesus, your life cannot be the same again. What happens to Bartimaeus? The Bible says, Jesus said to him, go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. I want you to understand what Jesus says. Jesus says the issue here is the issue of faith. Now I want you to understand that when we ask God in faith, when we come and when we stop, you know, trusting in any other and come to Jesus alone and say, you alone are able to deal with my situation Jesus is faithful. Jesus is able. So he says to Bartimaeus, well, you have demonstrated your faith. How has he demonstrated his faith? When people were telling him to be quiet, when people were telling him it's foolishness to follow Jesus, when people were telling him all sorts, he cried all the more to Jesus. Now you see, Jesus is seeking after those people who, when the world is saying, well, you know, it's a bit foolishness following Jesus, People who would say, you know what, you can say that I am gonna, I'm going to cry aloud anyhow. Jesus is looking for people when people are saying, don't shut yourself down, don't cry aloud. They will cry aloud even more. That's a demonstration of faith. In other words, Bartimaeus realized, if I miss this opportunity, that's me done. That's me remaining in a state of dependence. But when you meet Christ, my friend, you cannot remain the same. I want to make this point loud and clear. Those that have met Christ cannot and will not be the same. I want to tell you, my friends, I know this personally. Most of you don't know my beginnings, but there are some who know where I come from. There are people that know me before I loved Jesus this much. I did live another lifestyle somehow. 
But I can tell you, when I found Jesus, that lifestyle was gone. I realized that that was rubbish. I realized that that was foolishness of life. And now, here I am, and I'm living the best life ever. Why? Because Jesus, when he meets you, it is a game changer. He is a life changer. But you see, all of us, we can have our lives changed. We can have our lives turned around. Bartimaeus was turned from sitting, depending on people, to being independent, to being able to see, to being able to walk around without anyone aiding him, to being able to see things he never saw before, to be able to start thinking about his own life because now Bartimaeus could function like everybody else. I want to put it to you. There are things that keep you behind. There are things that are keeping you begging every single day because, because Jesus is not yet in your life. But you see, if you allow Jesus to get a little closer to you, if you listen carefully to Jesus saying, what can I do for you? And you give it to Jesus. I want to put it to you, my friends, that there is nothing that our God cannot do. There is no problem greater that Jesus cannot solve. I want to tell you, it does not matter what it is that you are going through. It does not matter how long you've been going through it for. It does not matter how much everybody else has failed to resolve it for you. But if you give it to Jesus, if you come and you just whisper a prayer and cry to Jesus and tell him, God, take away this thing that keeps me up at night. Take away this distress that I experience every single day. God will give you joy. God will give you comfort. God will give you something you've never experienced before. My friends, I am here to tell us, to bring us, to call us to Jesus. I wish somebody here we will give themselves to Jesus. Try him. Now you see there are people that think this is old-fashioned stuff. But you see, better be old-fashioned with Jesus than to be in the new fashion of life and continuing in your distress. Better Jesus in these days, my friends, knowing that he is able to do more than what you and I can imagine. He can give us more than what we can even think. He can give us even more than what we can ask. Now you see, God does not force his, he does not force himself upon anybody. And my friends, on this Holy Sabbath day, I am preaching to us, my friends, just to encourage us, but also so deeply wanting all of us to give our lives to Jesus. I am calling us to something that, you know, most people mock every single day. There are those that think, you know, there is some craziness in following this. Better be crazy with Jesus than to be saying with no Jesus. I want to tell you, my friend, this world may think that you are crazy. This world may try and kind of shut us down shut you down, but I want to tell you something, my friends, cry all the more. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. That's all he said. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus of Nazareth, you can pray this simple prayer. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And I can assure you, my friends, God's ears will hear you in the midst of all the commotion, in the midst of the multitude. It does not matter how long you've been in that situation. It does not matter how many voices are telling you this is foolishness. When you call upon him, he will hear you and life will not be the same again. God bless you, my friends. Whatever decision you make in your life, God bless you. But I'll ask you this, my friend. Try Jesus. Try Jesus. And when you have been blessed, my friends, press share. Let's share this message to other people. You may well serve somebody today because 
they may well find this Jesus. They may well be desperately looking for somebody to call on, somebody to call out to. Jesus is still alive. The Bible says his ears, they are not blocked that he can't hear. His hands are not short that they cannot touch. God is still touching lives today. My life is being touched every single day. I can tell you this and confidently I can tell you my story. My story is Jesus took me from some place. The place I thought I was happy and brought me to this place where I have found what happiness really is. Now I can smile all the way. May God bless you. Have a wonderful time. Enjoy the sunshine. And remember to stay safe. Wear a mask. And enjoy. God bless you.